Mr. Beast honestly might have just ruined his entire career. Now there was a video released about a week ago which is just casually sitting at around 4.5 million views and counting. Wouldn't be surprised if this gets about 10 million in the coming weeks. But essentially this is a former Mr. Beast employee who saw some stuff and has come forward to expose him. Now you should all be aware about what's happened over the last few weeks and let's just say like it has not been a good week for Mr. Beast at all. Firstly, Chris Tyson, his former childhood best friend has been exposed for talking to minors and being into lollipop art. Then there was a Discord server leaked with both Chris Tyson and Mr. Beast in it, with the messages from that Discord server being extremely suspect and just straight up weird. Now to top this all off, we've got I worked for Mr. Beast, he's a fraud, sitting at about 5 million views. Seriously bro, like where does this all end for Jimmy? I'm honestly kind of shocked that he hasn't been cancelled yet. And to be honest with you, I don't even think that this is the final straw. There's probably going to be a ton more update videos soon and I'll be right here on this channel to cover it. So anyways, Let's start with this video. So Dogpack404 made this video and it's the only one on his channel, pretty much alleging that Mr. Beast is a fraud, that he fakes all of his videos, that his giveaways are fake, that his merch lotteries are fake, and that Feastables is a scam. There is just so much to unpack in this video, so let's just start with this right now. The first point this guy makes is that Jimmy fakes his videos. Also, if, if what we had to film was scripted, you know, because what we do is non-scripted, so you have to plan for a bunch of variables that you can't control, blah, blah. If what we did was scripted, Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Have you ever faked a video? No. But this train track is CGI, these bus wheels are CGI, this explosion is fake, this shredder is CGI, this car is digitally lifted, this pit is fake, this guy is fake, uh, this raccoon is a paid actor, sure, this island costs more than a dollar, this city is not abandoned, these buildings are CGI, but it's not your only way out, you can literally get an Uber to the airport for $20. That's not a lurker. It's just a guy. This whole room is fake. This contestant is an actor and a secret employee at Mr. Beast. They had him dive through this fake door twice. This line is scripted. This action is scripted. Uh, in fact, pretty much all the videos with Mac are scripted. You did it! Yeah! What we did was scripted. Holy shit, this stuff would be easy to pump out. Yeah, so that was just a montage of every little thing Jimmy has apparently faked as of recently. In terms of Mac, who is the most recent contestant in Mr. Beast videos, I've kind of known that he's been on Airax channel for a while now. So it honestly didn't surprise me to see him on Mr. Beast and I already knew who he was. I'm not sure if I'm the only one when Mr. Beast constantly kept saying that Mac was a random subscriber. Kind of thought in the back of my mind, well, I mean, yeah, he's obviously not a random subscriber. I know who Mac is. You guys know who Mac is and he's clearly now a part of the Mr. Beast crew. So I mean, as much as he definitely isn't a random subscriber, I'm sure everyone already knew that. What probably isn't so obvious and something that's pretty damning for Mr. Beast is that Mac is apparently being told what to do in these challenges to make everything seem cool and intense, like stalling out to the last second to make it seem cool or whatever when, you know, it's clearly scripted. I mean, firstly, these are allegations, by the way. I just want to get that out of the way right now. Nothing is completely proven. This is just some random employee coming forward with this. However, I don't think I'm the only one that thought that all of this was real when first watching it. Call me dumb, but I truly believed Jimmy when he said that everything is 100% real and, you know, unscripted. I mean, the problem here isn't that Jimmy is faking the videos. I mean, that's completely fine. Traditional media does that all the time. He's not really in the wrong for that. But the problem is don't go on to podcast after podcast and interview after interview acting like everything is real when it's just not. Because that not only ruins the viewer experience, but I'm pretty sure there's legal gray areas you can get into with that. And at that point, you're literally just lying to your viewers, you know, the people that made you famous. And as we all know, right, Mr. Beast has a history and reputation of being extremely trustworthy, hence why he has just reached 300 million subscribers. But it's like, if he's gonna sit here and lie about something as simple as faking and scripting a storyline in challenge videos to the last second, then what else is he lying about? That's the problem here, is that if he's gonna lie about one thing, what is he, what is he also gonna lie about? So, let's find out. Apparently, Apparently Mr. Beast doesn't only fake videos with Mac, but apparently his own challenge videos are fake as well. During this time lapse on the fourth day of Seven Days Stranded at Sea, you can clearly see there's no one in the shelter. These are their empty beds. But after a hard cut, magically five people are awake, and two of the boys have bright yellow raincoats that they didn't have when it rained on day two. And after standing the whole night completely soaked- You didn't spend the night soaked, Jimmy. You slept on the production yacht. It's ironic because this is one of the videos where they claim that they don't fake things. But no, we have to be the real channel that doesn't fake things. Uh, in this video, this wink was added in post. In fact, 58 was actually on the far opposite side of the room from 42, and he just didn't hear him. This whole revenge storyline was added in post. Multiple shots show how timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. Timers are edited in post. They also manipulated contestants' audio in post. We got 50 minutes. 
In general, if anything happens last second, it's fake. Or if you can hear someone's voice but can't see their mouth, the audio could easily be added in post. I literally think I'm gonna kill you. And yes, this lie detector video was also fake. Have you ever faked a video? No. Fake that lie. Ah! Now look, in terms of all the CGI and extra audio post-production stuff, I personally think that that's okay. It doesn't really damage the storyline of the video and whatnot. I do understand that you need extra things as a YouTuber and, you know, a filmmaker to make your video better. But the problems start to arise, though, when your entire storyline starts to become fabricated. Like if you're telling people to say certain things or not staying in the raft in the middle of the ocean when you're supposed to be during the middle of the night, then obviously that's messed up. And again, this is normally okay in traditional media, right? And it would be okay if Jimmy would sit here and admit that this was just a skit for entertainment. But it's not, bro. Jimmy has said that this stuff is real, so if it isn't real, then we 100% have an issue here. You can't go around saying that things are real when they're just not. Like that that is lying. I mean, it's not like he's ever rigged the results of a challenge, that would be impossible because he films with hundreds of random subscribers, right? Wrong. Let's look at this video. Not only were the results of this video completely scripted, but the contestants are not random subscribers. So many people had jobs. Oh, that contestant had to get out for her job? I guess you forgot she's your hiring manager. I actually recognize a lot of people in this video, including Jimmy's own girlfriend. So yeah, the random subscribers you see in challenges are actually never random. They're almost always local to Mr. Beast and oftentimes friends and family of Mr. Beast employees or just the employees themselves. And when they do pull someone from outside of North Carolina, it's usually somebody who's in the industry, who's camera trained, who has built a following. And what's even worse is that the results of this video were completely scripted. According to a former Mr. Beast employee, it would have been a PR problem if the boys had won by a lot. And because so many of the female contestants were Mr. Beast employees who got out immediately, production stepped in to actually make the results of the challenge closer. Uh, you can actually see some of this happen on camera, like when Jimmy pays one of the boys $10,000 to leave, which is twice as much as the actual prize money. Uh, but doesn't make the same offer to the girls. Look, I'm not gonna lie, a lot of the stuff in this video right now is kind of stuff that in the back of my mind I kind of half to realize while watching Mr. Beast videos, but I just never really fully clocked it until now. Like every video where Mr. Beast has a ton of contestants, do you really think that if you just subscribe to Mr. Beast's channel, that he's randomly just gonna find you in his subscriber list and just fly you out from wherever you are in the world? That's not how this works, bro. Obviously it's not. It's extremely hard to just find people that subscribe to you. That are not only good on camera, but also speak English and, you know, have good background checks. Like, it's it's so much work to find random subscribers. It's just so much easier for Mr. Beast to find people locally that, you know, are good on camera, can speak English, all that. So you don't have to buy plane tickets across the planet, do extra background checks, blah, blah, blah. Pretty much what this guy is alleging right now is that Mr. Beast is just taking shortcuts on his channel, making things a lot easier for himself. Which, again, I mean, is okay. I'm not bagging him for doing that. But, like, just don't say that this is all real if it's clearly not. Don't say that you're bringing out random subscribers if you're not bringing out random subscribers. Don't say that the videos are real and they're unscripted if they're scripted. And also again, with the whole Mr. Beast girlfriend being in the 100 boys, 100 girls video, this is common knowledge that this is something that Mr. Beast actually said himself. He actually said that his girlfriend had to fill in for a video once, so I mean, we can't really bag Jimmy for that. That's one good thing that Jimmy's done. He's already admitted that his girlfriend sometimes appears in these videos. But now again, the biggest thing that there's an issue with is that the story lines are being fabricated. I mean, you can add people saying certain things here, a little bit of CGI there, scripting points here, but scripting storylines and having the actual base of your videos be fake while claiming that it's all real is the problem here. And I and a lot of people are gonna have an issue with this. Because I mean, let's say that out of the 200 people in this boys vs girls video, 75% of the people are just local people that Mr. B specifically hired for the video, versus 25% actual random subscribers. Imagine after sitting in a box for three to four days, right, just realizing after that that it was all rigged from the start and you never had a chance to win. That's pretty scummy in my opinion, and again, he should be admitting that. And the major problem with all this doesn't just end at this being ethically questionable. Some of this crap starts to become borderline illegal. I mean, in traditional media, lying about something being real definitely wouldn't fly, but apparently because we're on YouTube, there's loopholes or whatever, and apparently it's okay. I mean, so far, if this is all true, Jimmy is pretty cooked, not only legally, 
but you know, ethically. I don't think anyone, I don't think people are going to be happy with this. Because no one can watch a Mr. Beast video after this and truly enjoy it knowing that he's lying about all this stuff, saying that it's real when it's clearly not real. He's pretty much made a brand at this point out of supposedly having everything be real. He's gone on podcasts all the time saying, you know, all my videos are real and you know, it's unscripted. So it would be so disappointing to a lot of people if this all turned out to be fake, which it really does seem like it is. Now this next part of this video, this guy is pretty much talking about apparently Mr. Beast's real time 10 minute video where a guy tries to get through some five story building in 10 minutes and the video is supposed to be in real time. Yeah, well apparently that's fake as well. Now I'll be honest, a lot of people once this video came out pretty much said, yeah, you know, Mr. Beast videos are probably staged at this point. That was probably the video where people started to realize, okay, this is probably starting to get scripted. However, me, honestly, I kind of naively thought at the time that this was real, but uh, here's what this guy has to say about it. This is a real time video, meaning that time elapses the same in the video as it does in real life. Now, immediately the intro is sped up and the timer is clearly added in post and he clearly touches the laser here, but whatever, let's assume that it's all real time. When he reaches the bottom floor, he has to turn these water valves. Now you can tell that these valves aren't actually connected to anything because the water flows out in an instant and it happens when he's not even touching the valve. The contestant also goes back to the first valve unaware that anything had happened and he's still able to spin it. So the valve seems to spin freely and isn't actually connected to the flow of water. So you could assume that producers might be off camera with remote switches to trigger the flow of water. And assuming they've tested this, the producers might know how long it takes for the water to clear out of the room, so they can sort of decide on the fly how many turns of the valve it takes or just when to trigger the water in general to make the results close. And in this video, spoiler alert, the contestant wins the money, so rigging the challenge could be seen as a good thing. But there are many examples of contestants losing. And in traditional media, this kind of rigging is actually completely illegal. We always have the same person tie all the knots so that we know they've tied them at the exact same tension. I mean, we get down to inches. And then we have a standards and practices person. And if you don't know what that is, on any kind of a game show where there is a prize, you have to have somebody that ensures that it's fair. They are out there essentially to make sure that we don't do something that would favor one player or one tribe. I paid the one guy who knew how to solve them to leave. In my mind, I'm thinking it's a fair game. Mm -hmm. But it's not. Yeah, so look, this is a real gray area about all this. Let's step aside from the fact that Mr. Beast rigging game shows and favoring contestants and faking videos is ethically bad for just a second. Let's talk about the legality of all of this. I mean, we just saw that podcast clip that, you know, most reality TV shows have regulations in place to make sure that everything's fair. Mr. Beast obviously doesn't have that. I mean, he's literally just a regular YouTuber. But at this point, I mean, he really isn't just a regular YouTuber. He's a mega superstar who gets 250 million views per video. This is someone sitting on a monopoly here. But you know, he can just hide behind the YouTuber excuse and that's why this guy's getting away with it. It's technically not a game show, so he doesn't need regulation and he doesn't need people sitting there making sure everything's fair. But now again, going back to the ethics behind all of this, just because something technically is legal doesn't make it right, obviously. Like, it's scummy that you're scripting videos without telling your audience that that's what you're doing. And I mean, again, he's made a brand pretty much out of this, claiming that everything is real and you know, he's harping on and scolding people that don't believe him or disagree that it's real. So for all this to come out now is just pretty crazy to me. Now this next thing that this guy alleges is that Mr. Beast merch live stream that he did a few years ago where apparently if you bought some Mr. Beast merch that he'd sign every single piece on his own. Apparently there was like 60,000 shirts and hoodies that he was supposedly, you know, signing every single one. Apparently bro, that's all a complete lie as well. For, for those of you who are just joining, if you buy one of our limited edition uh, 40 million special shirts we're celebrating 40 million subscribers with a really big video then we will sign that shirt and some of them will get random prizes like this in 10 minutes right because we gotta give them time to, to do their car we'll give two orders five hundred dollars each five yeah. minutes someone's getting three grand in, their someone, order. in five minutes we're gonna do the same thing again we're gonna put a thousand dollars in a random order two minutes newest order gets two 
thousand dollars. Good luck, everybody. So pretty much what's happening here is that, you know, this is apparently illegal. For a lottery or giveaway to be legal, you know, you see down here only two of these boxes can be checked. So if all three of the boxes are checked, then technically speaking, this is illegal. This was a six hour live stream. Uh, they took it down off YouTube, but five hours of it are still up on their Facebook page. Uh, and during those five hours, I counted 46 illegal lotteries. These lotteries are also run poorly multiple times. They would say something like, buy in the next five minutes for a chance to win. And then seven minutes later go, actually, the newest order in 30 seconds is gonna win. In five minutes, we're gonna do the same thing again. We're gonna put $1,000 in a random order. Hey, Daryl, don't we owe someone $1,000? We do. Yeah, so, all right, so the newest order in 30 seconds, we are gonna put $1,000 in your package. Steven, uh, Steven K. Okay. Oh. Steve. And there is no second giveaway 30 seconds later, like Jimmy said. Uh, this is just one very shady giveaway. Uh, they just go on to talk about how Steven made a profit. Steven's a handsome man. We're proud of you, Steven. I counted 13 of these extra shady lotteries where they did not give the prize in the original time frame that they said. In five hours, they gave away about $50,000 worth of stuff uh, and sold over 50,000 t-shirts. Selling these t-shirts at $42 each, profit margin would be about $22. But even if they were making like $1 per shirt, they would still be fine. Uh, also, by my estimates, only one in every 1,600 orders actually won a prize. And I guarantee he has real-time analytics on his laptop. He knows they make more money every time he says, Oh my God, guys, we're giving away so much stuff. We're not even going to make a profit. Yeah, so this is actually pretty damning evidence here. When all this was going on, when this live stream was happening, I was just still a kid. I didn't end up buying any Mr. Beast merch, but all throughout my childhood, I've kind of been under the impression that Jimmy just doesn't make that much money because he just gives it all away. And, you know, he does all these live streams where he's being generous. I've kind of just been under the impression impression that he's just such a nice guy and he's doing all these nice things. But I mean, as we've seen so far, it turns out that he's just profiting massively from this. And you know, him saying, oh guys, we're not even going to break even on this stream. is just a massive lie. Much like everything else we've seen so far, to be honest with you. And it's not even to the point that it's the lie anymore. That's the problem. I mean, like you guys just saw, this is very closely tiptoeing the line of being illegal. I mean, if you're going to lie about faking videos, right? That's one thing. If you're going to lie about, you know, saying you're getting random subscribers out in your videos and you know you're, you're not scripting videos and that that's whatever it's unethical right it's 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 really scummy but it's fine but when you start lying about lotteries and giveaways bro that's when you go past the twitter mob you're going past the twitter mob having a go at you bro it's the federal court that's gonna have a go at you at this point when you start messing around with the legality of things that's when you get really screwed over and to be honest if all of this video turns out to be true i seriously couldn't care less what happens to jimmy because you gotta think about this right now bro He's getting little kids to probably use their parents' credit cards to buy Jimmy's merch, most of which hopefully is with their permission, but, you know, in order to hopefully get an iPhone or $1,000 in the package. But apparently it turns out only 1 in 1,600 people get a prize, and, you know, they're profiting so much more than that. It's really just scummy, and also, at the end of the day, again, borderline illegal. Uh, it does say, this limited T signed by Mr. Beast and crew, uh, but the description says it's signed by a member of the Mr. Beast crew and it doesn't say anywhere that other members will sign mb deceiving people into believing it was signed by mr beast so here's a clip of tyler forging or not maybe not forging using mr beast's signature so tyler signs mb which is mr Beast's signature then he covers it signs his own initials tc smirks looks around and then quickly slides the shirt away could you make it any more obvious you know, you don't accidentally have someone else's signature as muscle memory. And again, I'm not a lawyer. I think this is fraud. Maybe they could say it's the brand's signature, even though it's clearly implied that this is Jimmy's signature, which was established during the last live stream. Cool. Hey! MB, Mr. Beast. So this is Mr. Beast's signature. No way, this one was signed by Mr. Beast. It's just got the MB, but it, that means it's signed by Mr. Beast. That's obviously his. Mr. Beast, this is so cool. 
that's obviously his. Yeah, so that's some pretty bad stuff right there. I mean, again, it's one thing to fake videos, but faking signatures now? I mean, that's outrageous, bro. And like this guy said, this could be a company signature, but I mean, the whole point of people buying the merch during the live stream was so that Mr. Beast would sign it himself and that the MB signature would be from him. So if you say you're gonna do something ethically and legally, you've got to follow through with it. So to see vision like this, where Tyler is secretly doing one of the signatures, it kind of just makes you think, like, how many of the signatures that are Mr. Beast, like, aren't actually Mr. Beast doing it? It just kind of makes you think. But anyway, now we move on to Feastables. You know, the chocolate bar that was been released all over the globe that is supposed to be made from only five ingredients and is healthier for you than most other chocolate bars out there? Well, apparently he's just flip-flopped that around completely and has just sold out by making Feastable bars complete garbage. It's interesting to look back at this because a large part of Feastable's marketing campaign was the fact that it's a better for you brand, that it's healthier for you than Hershey's. Less sugar, only four ingredients, all organic. I wanted to just make a better for you snack brand because I think a lot of the stuff out there is just terrible for you. Because obviously so much obesity and disease comes from the stuff we eat. Like Hershey's, for example, there's 10 ingredients, super processed. Our, our Fusils bars are five ingredients and just all the ingredients are way higher quality. And it's infinitely better than the other options out there. Now in 2024, Mr. Beast changed the formula again to where it has mostly the same ingredients as Hershey's and even more sugar and more calories per bar. And this initial ad for Feastables where he calls it healthy is still getting millions of views a month. Also, I don't think you should ever advertise it as over a million dollars in prizes when more than a third of those prizes are just coupons for more Mr. Beast products, forcing you to spend more money if you actually want to redeem them. Yeah, so this is where things start to get really bad. I mean, bro, you've advertised something as being healthy and better for you and, oh, it's just so nice. We're making things healthy. And then you just sneakily make it complete crap. I mean, to be honest with you, everyone knows that chocolate is bad for you, right? But when you sit there advertising as something as healthy just to then make it worse than her, She's adding 30 grams of sugar per bar, which is just insane, by the way. These are not big chocolate bars by any means, so that is a lot of sugar. Then it's just disgusting, bro, and you should absolutely be called out for it. I mean, I'll be honest here, if all this stuff comes out to be true, it's almost like this is the downfall of Mr. Beast. This is pretty crazy stuff, and this video that we're watching is only getting bigger and bigger. Like, this situation is not slowing down anytime soon, and to be honest, like I said before, I wouldn't be surprised if more comes out about this. Now, there was another Mr. Beast employee called Chucky, that apparently made this huge tweet defending Mr. Beast. So let's see how he apparently debunks this whole video. So this is Chucky here saying, I quickly want to debunk some info in this video since the guy who made this was on my team. It was my decision to fire him for erratic behavior. He worked at the company for less than a month and wasn't on an employee for most of the videos he mentions to have knowledge on. There's so much in this video and I want to specifically address him saying our videos are faked or staged because this is not true and I was on the set for many of these videos. Quote, you won't get in a video unless you're family or friends with someone that works at Beast. This is a wild statement that can easily be proven wrong. There is probably hundreds of thousands of people who have no affiliation or friends or family of Mr. Beast. Think the 456 people in Squid Game or ages 1 to 100, etc. Jimmy doesn't know like more than half a dozen people, lol. I mean, I don't know if that's really debunking anything. You're kind of just, at this point, it's kind of just he said, she said. You're not really proving anything. Quote, the train track was CGI, the bus wheels are CGI, the pit is fake. He acts like he's exposing us for using CGI to make backgrounds look cool when we've done multiple public behind the scenes videos with So Crispy showing this. It's clearly not a secret. On top of that, we did not drive buses into that pit in the same with the train as you claim we didn't. Okay, yeah, I guess that's a fair enough point. Quote, the raccoon was a paid actor. I don't even know what to say about this. Clearly not an actor, lol. Yeah, I mean, I, I kind of didn't really, I, I, I didn't really think that the raccoon was going to be an actor. I don't know what that point was. Quote, Island cost more than a dollar. Not true. We did pay a dollar for the island. You can Google Mr. Peace purchases out of Banks Island for one dollar, which stated in this video was released. Quote, he moved into a mansion two months before being in a video, talking about Mac, a million dollar mansion. He talks about how two months before we filmed the first video with Mac that he moved into a mansion. Mac was staying at a friend's house and I'm not sure how that proves anything or why it's relevant. I mean, I don't know how this thing right here proves that anything's relevant either. I mean, you didn't really, pr you didn't really prove that the whole Mac situation 
wasn't faked. But anyway, moving on, this wink was added in post. Brah, he really did a wink. That, that is a flat out lie again. Quote, the revenge storyline was added in post. He implies that 42 and 58 were scripted and not real. The contestants themselves have talked about this on, on streams after they did the video. They legit did not like each other. He also claimed 58 was on the far opposite side and didn't hear him. Just because he was on the other side of the room, uh, you don't think 58 heard him at all. How on earth would he know? Quote, not only were the results of the video completely scripted, but the contestants are not what random subscribers. He claims our 100 boys versus 100 girls video is scripted and the proof is random text saying that it is. That's it. It was not scripted. Jimmy probably had countless people on set for that video and it would have been impossible to hide. The video was not scripted. I was on set for this and there was no bias for who won. I mean, I don't know about that. I mean, there was literally vision of Jimmy, you know, like paying people to leave and whatever and do all this sort of stuff. It clearly was biased towards the girl's side and I mean, anyone who watched that video can know that. I actually don't know how it's taken so long for people to figure out that that, that like that whole video is clearly biased towards the girls. The employees in the video were there to fill in for people who tested positive for COVID last minute right before filming. Thea, Jimmy's girlfriend, mentioned this on a podcast and you know, I already mentioned this before so I'm going to skip past that. He also suggested that the real time video was fake. This is not fake. It was a nightmare to make and this was legit filmed in 10 minutes. Well, I mean, again, you're not really proving anything wrong. You're kind of just denying that this all happened. Quote, also, I think some of Mr. Beast's giveaways are fake. We do not fake giveaways. I've been hands on with some of them and have personally been the person to connect winners with accounting department to get paid. You also suggested that we didn't spend a million dollars on Samsung phones and I can assure you we did. Another lie from you. I could keep going on, but I don't want this to be too long. Dawson himself said on Reddit that he was on shrooms and weed when filming this video, which might explain some of the made up stuff. Dawson was only employed from March 25th and was let go on April 19th, 2024. He was on a 90-day trial and we ended it early, paying him out of, uh, for June 25th, as we guarantee the 90 days of pay so we could transition into a new job. I'd appreciate it if everyone reading this could help dispel all these fake rumors by spreading this info. I mean, look, I don't know about this tweet, to be honest with you. I mean, like, there really isn't any evidence in here. It's kind of just this guy saying, uh, you know, th this whole video is a lie. It's really hard to prove whether or not Dog Pack in his video is lying or whether this guy in the tweet is telling the truth or lying. You know, it, it, it is really difficult. But I'm kind of under the impression that Mr. Beast is faking a lot of this stuff. I can't lie. And again, these are all allegations, but that's just kind of what I'm thinking at the moment. Anyways, I'm done with this Mr. Beast situation. Click the video on screen right now because YouTube thinks you'll enjoy it. And I'll see you all over there. Subscribe.